So how much power has my solar system pulled in within basically the last week, week and a half? Pretty much I haven't used any grid power. This is a very good part of the year. It's not super cold, not super hot. So you're not using a lot of the HVAC at night. And of course I did add about 15 kilowatt hours of batteries to my system, you know, several weeks ago. So that's definitely helping out as well. For anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Rodney Hunt. I do DIY solar and self-reliance on this channel. So if you're interested in that, hey, go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button. So basically, I'm going to break down my system for you and tell you what I'm going to be up to here in the near future. Basically, I have three of the EG4 6000 XPs. I got a main array with about 28 panels on it of the Solar Ever 450 watt panels. And I have a tilt array with 12 of the Hyundai 305 watt panels. And that is on my main part of my house. And then I have this building here that's running its own separate system. But we're not going to talk about that in this video. Basically, just talking about my main house. I got around a 16 kilowatt array, a little bit more than that. And it's been doing pretty good lately let's go ahead and jump over to solar assist and i'll show you the results of about the last week and a half all right so hopefully you can see this here i may have to blow it up a little bit but basically i'm just going to show you what happened today it's about 8 25 on uh march the 26th right now and as you see today i pulled in 106 kilowatt hours and of course my battery did get to 100 percent here so as you can see right here I'm at 97% battery power right now. Not a whole lot coming out. Basically, today I pulled in 106 kilowatt hours. As you can see, uh, battery is still pretty full, luckily. So the battery got fully charged today. That's why I didn't go over 106 kilowatt hours. You'll see in some of my other uh, days, I went above that and some I went a lot lower. It just depends on the weather. But even with the lower output, you know, I've been still running for like a week, a week and a half. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the totals. So I only had solar systems going since about the 14th. So it just shows since the 14th. So I pulled in 34 kilowatts, 51. Then on the 16th, I pulled in 16. And that is when I was running on the grid some. And then on the 17th, I ran on the grid a little bit. But I pulled in 66.5 kilowatts. It was because my battery was about dead. That's why I ran on the grid most of that day. Then the next day, I pulled in 90. And, I, you know, since the 17th, I've been uh off grid so pulled in 90 then 87 then 50 that was my lowest day that i pulled in and i still left it off grid so did pretty good the next day pulled in 117 that's just because my batteries got so low i have you know as much room as possible to, to fill that battery bank up and so it just pulled in as much as it could that day and just had a good day then pulled in 89 and 86 and then 47 then yesterday pulled in 102 and then today pulled in 106 kilowatts so you can see you know when you have good sun and your battery gets low enough you can pull in 100 kilowatts you know here in southeastern north carolina at least with a 16 kilowatt array so that's not bad at all in my opinion and yes i do use a lot of power at my house you know we have a big family i still have nine kids at home so you know me and my wife nine kids Hey, 11 people and using that much power. Hey, it seems like a lot, but it's really not. Because, I mean, hey, you just have to do the normal stuff every day. The washer and the dryer is running all the time. So we, we cook a lot. So we do use a lot of power. Got a couple of HVACs. Got a mini split. So running all that. And I do have an EV as well, but usually I don't charge it on the house. I charge it on my system here on the building. So anybody that thinks, you know, that they can't run their house you know, off grid and do it themselves and, you know, pulling enough electric to run their stuff. You know, most people don't have a family as big as mine. You may have a bigger house than I have, of course. So you could definitely pull in more power. But, you know, if you're worried about it because of people, you know, you could you could get enough. You just start small, you get your one or two batteries, get you an inverter, get you about 10 panels, and that's a good start. And you can take a couple of loads and put them in a critical loads panel and run them just off of that and then run the grid power to your main your big stuff and then over time build your system up add another inverter whatever the case may be add more batteries add more panels you know and then move continually move more loads over till eventually you'll have your whole house running off grid or like i'm getting ready to do you can take one of these hybrid inverters like this flex boss 18 behind me every time i'm using this software and it thinks i'm doing a thumbs up it just throws a thumbs up up there it's crazy but anyway, you can use a Flex Boss 18 like I got behind me. I'm going to use that and that 12K right there. And I'm going to connect them to a Grid Boss. And those have hybrid features. So it has grid interactivity. So if you wanted to, you can sell back to the grid and all that. I'm not going to do that. But I will be able to send 
power, you know, to my house and bring grid power in on the same line. So it'll go back and forth to the uh, main uh, panel that I'm going to have running everything in the house. So I won't have any problems with that and I'll be able to charge the batteries if I need to use grid or I'll be able to use an inverter just to power the loads. And that's the nice thing about them hybrid inverters. You can just put everything on the grid part and be able to feed everything. All right, let's go over here and look at a few charts as well from the last seven days. So you can see kind of the arc of everything I pulled in for the day for solar. So let's go ahead and pull that up on the screen records. So as you can see right here for the last seven days, what everything looks like. Let's see if we can make this us a little bit bigger. So as you can see today at about, let's see, about 245, the batteries were full. You might not be able to see it. It might be a little too close to the edge. But basically right here at 245 today, you can see the drop off because the batteries are full. And then yesterday, it pretty much ran all day. The battery was never full. It was probably close. And then the day before that, a lot of clouds right there in the middle. Then the day before that, at about 2 o'clock, the batteries are full. Day before that, about 2.15. So about the same time every day during this time of the year, we're not using you know a ton of power compared to the summer and the middle of the winter. Then the day before that, as you can see, we didn't use full power on this one. You know, pretty much the whole day pulling as hard as it could. And then the day before that, you know, not great. You know, it seems like in the morning did all right. And then it kind of dropped off. And I'm not, I'm pretty sure the battery was not charged at that point. I guess I can pull that up as well. So it says, let's see if it says the battery power. Yeah, battery power. In the state of charge. It only got up to 80 some percent that day. So it's just another bad weather day right there. But solar assistant is pretty nice. If you're interested in solar assistant, I'll leave that linked up below as well. I'm not a affiliate or anything with that, so I won't make anything off of that. But I think Adam Delay may be. So if you want to go to his channel and, and pick one of these up, you know, it's a wireless little system that connects directly to the EG4 inverters. To give you all your information, just makes it a little nicer than a lot of the EG4 monitoring app stuff. And I definitely like these charts. You know, it definitely is an improvement when you get to look at it this way. You can put seven days in. Or just highlight it like that and blow it up and kind of get down to the nitty gritty of what you were pulling exactly at what time of the day. And you can see kind of when the battery got fully charged. So I definitely like that. And remember, if you're looking to get any of this equipment, I have everything linked up below that I use and everything that I'm getting ready to install. That way, if you want to pick some of it up and help my channel out, I will make a small commission off of that. And it's definitely appreciated. You also get $50 off anytime you use one of my links. I know it's not a lot, but hey, it is definitely better than nothing. And depending on when you're watching this video, if you're trying to get a FlexBoss 18, I should be getting a discount code soon. And I'll put that down in the description as well. So you better get a better discount than that $50 off just when you buy the FlexBoss 18 though. And of course, that's just going to be for a short amount of time. So if you want to pick up a FlexBoss 18 and you want to save more than $50, go ahead and check that out in the description below. And as always, if you're new to the channel, we basically do a live stream every Thursday between my channel, Adam DeLays, and Eric at East Texas Homestead. You know, go to subscribe to all our channels, and we do the Unplug live stream on DIY Solar. We try to answer your questions and help you out. And we ask people in the chat, trying to get answers from you as well for our systems if we're trying to work on something. So it's just a community effort trying to help everybody out to become more self-reliant. So if you're interested in that, hey, don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever we do the live streams, which is every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll leave that whole playlist linked below. So if you want to go check it out, hey, go ahead and hit that up. And as always, thanks for watching.